Hi there. So today we're going to talk to you a little bit about how to handle software updates with Deep Freeze Mac. Um, a lot of folks ask us, how do I do software updates? How do I do my uh, Apple software updates, my third party updates, things of that nature with Deep Freeze Mac. And there's a couple of ways you can approach it, but in general it falls into one of two camps. What we can do is we can either integrate with whatever you're using for third party stuff using the command line control components of our product so that your third party product can turn Deep Freeze on and off as required to perform third party updates. Now, all of the user guide, all the stuff that we're talking about here is documented in the user guide under the Deep Freeze tasks section of the user guide. And as you can see, there's just a number of commands that you can use to build out your task sequence, including booting frozen, booting thawed, uh, checking for updated versions of Deep Freeze, you know, creating thaw space, creating schedules, all this type of stuff can be done on the fly with anything that can push um, a command to the Mac to execute. Now, that's great if you've got the infrastructure to do that, but a lot of our customers don't necessarily have a management tool that they're leveraging to do this. So what Deep Freeze Mac also has, it has the ability to create what we call a maintenance period or a maintenance task. And in that case, what we do is we configure Deep Freeze so that we tell it at a certain time period, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn Deep Freeze off, automatically run certain tasks. So the Apple software updates, for example, um, we can do, we can run any shell script that you might want to push to us. So, you know, if you want to integrate with like get Mac apps or something like that, we can do that as well. And it all kind of centers around the maintenance uh, page here. So what I can do is click the plus key here. And what I can do is I can now create events that will run on a schedule and perform whatever I want. So let's say I want to do my Apple software updates and I want to do them every, let's say Thursday night. Apple software updates. And I'll set that to every Thursday night, repeating. Now let's say, for example, if I was in a public library that closed at nine o'clock, let's say 9.15 p.m. I wanna run my software updates. It, should it shouldn't take more than an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So let's give it till about, we'll go to 10.30 p.m. And we'll select the option here to install Apple software updates. So that'll tell us to go out, check with Apple for the latest versions of the software, download them and get them in place. Now, I can, I've got a couple other options here. I can lock out the user from the machine, which I actually would recommend. This means that if a user sits down in front of the computer, they're not gonna be able to log into it and actually interact with the machine and cause changes to the computer while you're running your updates. Um, also a good way to lock a user out, especially if you're in a situation where say a lab closes down for a period of time or shuts off this can lock them out so that you know you don't have them just hanging out in the lab kind of doing their thing later in the day. We also have an option to shut down after the maintenance task is completed. Now, this would be use this is very useful if you're looking to make sure your machines don't get left on all night or aren't running for a long period of time. But if you're going to schedule multiple maintenance tasks to run, so let's say I want to do Apple software updates between 9:15 and 10:30, and then I want to do between 10.45 and 12, I want to do something else with a shell script. I want to make sure I don't select the option to shut down with this task. If I do that, the machine will shut down and kind of skip that second event that I'm trying to run. Um, we can also show a message on the machine before the maintenance event starts to give users kind of a warning. Now, because I'm going, let's say I'm closing at nine o'clock, I'm starting the maintenance event 9.15, what I can do is I can pop that warning up and say, hey, we're gonna do this, get off the machine, save your work, give them a fair chance to get their stuff put together. So when I hit okay here, you'll see it's now added into my list with the name, the frequency, um, start and end time, and a summary of what we're doing with the machine here. Now what I can also do, as I said, we can actually run shell scripts as well um, on the client machine. Now what we can do is we can actually create any shell, any shell script you want to create, uh, we can just trigger that at any time. So what you could do is if you're using a third party piece of software to run third party updates and it has the ability to run on a schedule or on a command line, um, for example, say this one that is out there is this get Mac apps. Uh, website and what they do is they provide you with a little command that you can run that will download updates for your third-party apps. So what I can do is just create a shell script to paste this command into and then I just select that script in here and then that will give me the option to run this script and update those apps without having to go through a bunch of extra coordination or extra steps. Um, this is really only kind of limited by how much time you want to spend writing a script 
to manage whatever it is you're looking to do. Um, yeah, so it, it's fairly flexible. Um, you just need to test your script out, make sure it works, and you'll be good to go. And again, we've got the same options to lock out the user, uh, to shut down once the maintenance tasks are complete, to show a message to warn them, and all that jazz. Now, generally speaking, I would recommend giving about 15 minutes between each set of events that you're going to create. That way you give enough time for the computer to reboot and for anything that needs to be wrapped up to be taken care of. Because what you don't want to do is have two events so close that they kind of overlap. You can't overlap them because we don't want to have them interfering with each other, but you also don't want them too close together. Um, so in a nutshell, that's how to set up uh, software update tasks and such in Deep Freeze Mac. A um, little different if you're working with the cloud-based version of the product. We'll get into that in a separate video a little later on. Um, but if you have any other questions, need any assistance with getting this up and going, feel free to reach out to the support team, support at pharonix.com, and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Hope you found this video um, educational and entertaining, and uh, thanks for watching.